First, let's look at what communication is not. Communication is not speaking, and communication is not writing. We've all heard speakers speak or read things and went, okay, fine, and we didn't understand what they said. That's because communication is not an activity like speaking and writing. No, communication is a result. I either communicated or I didn't communicate. And if I could get an idea to go from here to there and you remember it, then I communicated. If you don't remember it, I didn't communicate, right? And so how do you then do that? That becomes a really tough question. Can, is it possible to learn likability? Is it possible to learn to communicate better? So how many of you enjoy spending time with people you don't like? <laughs> so are there any of you who would prefer to spend time with people you don't like? Okay, so that's 100% buy-in. Likeability matters, and it really matters when you're speaking. It really matters when you're selling. It really matters when you're selling an idea, when you're selling yourself, when you're selling a product, when you're selling your company. UCLA did a huge poll a few, I think almost 20 years ago. They did a couple of polls, and, and out of the poll, they came up with the same information. And that information was, whether or not we like you depends on three major factors, 55%, 38%, 7%. 55% of whether or not we like you is your face and body. That's pretty shallow of us. So what's 38%? 38% is not our competence. It, it's not whether we smile. It's not what we say. It's not our ideas. It's not how smart we are. 38% of whether or not someone likes us is the sound of our voice. We're at 93% and you're not through your, halfway through your first sentence. And you already told me you don't want to listen to people you don't like. Isn't that a little creepy? And 7% of course is what you say. But they're not listening if the first 93 didn't work for them. Isn't that amazing? So let's just begin with the face. Let's begin with the face and figure out what makes somebody likable. The face I had when I walked down the hall. You guys can go up here if you want. The face I had when I walked down the hall and as the world turns. These two lines right here. They say, I got some really good stuff in here, but you can't have it. <laughs> it's the angry face. I can be thinking, I really want to help you, or you're an idiot. <laughs> it's the same face. <laughs> Whatever it is, you can't have it. And that face, that worried face, that thinking face, looks angry. It doesn't help. It doesn't help because when you have this face, it says, I'm on one team and you can't have what I have and you're on the other team and I'm going to beat you. It's even, you know, and lots of people don't have that, especially in the world of entrepreneurialism. You guys know this doesn't help you, but you do have the business face, the poker face. The face that says, I like playing a game with you. This game's a lot of fun. I'm taking all the money. I got stuff in here and you can have it if you pay me. <laughs> That's the nature of the business face. Put your business face on. Do you like me now? It doesn't help you. It's not the face that helps you the most. And so if the, the thinking, angry face doesn't help you, and the poker face is essentially saying, we may be playing a game, but it's you against me, what's left? Any thoughts? The smile is certainly great if you have teeth. <laughs> the smile is the single greatest way to connect with somebody. But sometimes it's just inappropriate. Hi, I'm going to have to let you go. <laughs> it doesn't help you. And so they. The person that you let go because you had to walks out of the room and they say, he's an amazing jerk, he's a sadist. 
So if you can't do that, now what's left? I have a friend, a colleague, Arch Lusberg, who said, please tell people about the open face. The open face or the caring face. And so for me, it is life-changing. The open face is the same face my wife taught me about when I went home that day at, after leaving As the World Turns. It's the same face you would use when looking into, say, a baby's crib. You wouldn't look into a baby's crib and say, goo goo gaga. <laughs> you say, goo goo gaga, hi, baby. You lift your brow a little bit. You look carefully into the baby's eyes. You say, I'm going to do everything I can to help you. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you are fed and clothed. I'm going to be your coach. I'm going to be your leader. I'm going to take you to a better place. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to be the person you can always count on. And when you have that, like, wow, OK, we're good. In the world of communication, every time you open your mouth, you should help. Every time. And if you're not helping, then you're hurting yourself. I'm sure a lot of you have met a president before. They don't meet you and say, hello, nice to meet you. You know I'm the president. And uh, very lucky for you to be here today with me. <laughs> I'll tell you the number one thing I hear when I ask people the question, what was it like to meet the president? They say, you know, it was an amazing experience. I felt like I was the only person in the room. And I said, well, what was the situation? Well, I was in a receiving line of 400 people. And it made, he made them feel like they were the only person in the room. It's true of everybody I've heard. And of course, with Clinton, that can be a little weird if you're a woman. But, <laughs> but being the only, made to feel like you're the only person in the room is, make, is proving that you're a human being and treating them like a human being. The presidential secret is they treat people like they're special. And if you're not treating everyone you meet like they're special, then you're missing something. Okay, that's likability. In the world of, of likability, you can make that connection, we can like you a lot, but why should we now trust you? We remember things through emotion, through feeling, through hope, through fear, through, through loving, through caring. That's how we remember things. That's how we should communicate. And say, well, you know, I'm a business person. I don't want to get emotional here. Why not? That's how you'll be successful. That's the essence to making a powerful connection. Make a human connection. Make an emotional connection. And when you can make an emotional connection, you've got the world by the tail. If you can deliver one message that everyone remembers, you win. So don't try to remember the 20 or 30 things that, a, that you have to, to say at a meeting. Say, what's the one thing in the meeting I want them to remember? Now, how can I connect 20 or 30 things to that so that they'll walk out of here saying, this is how they're going to achieve that one message? That you should, in every instance, never tell me everything you know. Just tell me what I want to know, and that is how will you affect my life, my safety, my security, my happiness, my family, my income, my comfort. That's all I want to know. When you go to a congressman, that's all they want to know. So how do you rephrase your concern so that they say, wow, this guy's helping me? Because that's how you'll be successful with the congressman. Now, sometimes it's necessary to tell them what they need to know. And that will be, look, here's the specific data. And do it if you possibly can in ways that they'll never forget. Now, I think the best way to do that is through story. In your world, when you go on to Capitol Hill, think about how you can phrase what you're going to say so it seems to actually help them do their job better. Helps them understand that the people in your district really need their help in order to achieve something that that's what will make a huge difference to them. And they'll think they've made friends, and guess what? Just like the woman who was getting a divorce and wasn't, maybe they will make some friends. Maybe it will work out. So go ahead, give each other some compliments, look at each other like you care, and go make a difference. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon.